Volcanoes are lying off California's coast. Asphalt domes and underwater volcanoes discovered. We usually think of California, we think of the very high threat, high threat volcanoes that have been marked by USGS. But what about everything underwater? We know that a lot of things underwater, of course, are very difficult to ascertain. Recently, they have found thousands of new faults off California and Cascadia faults because of the um, coast, because of the fiber optic cables that help them ascertain where these new faults are because they find the movement of the ground underneath there. So they've also found methane plumes off the coast of California, methane. And of course, we know that wherever you have seismic areas and mountains, you do have tremendous reservoirs, reserves of uh, crude oil and gas, as we know here. Now, these are, this is an underwater volcano, NOAA's image of carbon dioxide gas being emitted from the underwater volcano of this one being off the coast of California. According to fizz.org, scientists discovered a cluster of underwater asphalt volcanoes rising the seafloor off the coast of Santa Barbara, California. This is not recent. I'm reading from a 2010 release of uh, information. Seven volcanoes, seven volcanoes, 65 feet tall, probably last disgorged petroleum and natural gas into the seas 30,000 to 40,000 years ago. Okay, so the volcanoes, petroleum and natural gas. You see how, how important, I guess, volcanoes are. That's what they did. It's not just the natural gas, it's also the petroleum, the oil. And this went out 30, 40,000 years ago during the most recent ice age. This is according to geochemist David Valentine of University of California at Santa Barbara. Valentine and his researchers, his team, first came across the asphalt bahometh, these huge things, in 2007 using a white three-seater Navy submarine operated by the Woods Hole Oceanographic, Oceanographic Institute. That's where we're getting these images from bundled in warm, non-flammable clothes and crammed against the damp sub-walls, they were trying to unsuccessfully find methane seeps. They were frustrated and they took a detour, curious about the place where earlier surveys indicated some kind of mound rising from the seafloor, 726 feet from the surface. They peered through the portholes into the gloom of the sea and the sub's lights illuminated only a few feet. Quote, we were coming across very boring, very silty seafloor with not a lot of life in it. Suddenly we saw a cliff looming. Then there was a giant black wall teeming with life, end quote. The nearly vertical black wall, can you imagine, seethed with basket stars, wolf fields and fish. It seemed to be deep water reef of source, but it was not coral. At first, the submarine occupants thought the black cliff was a basalt. The sub's robotic arm got a hold of a chunk of it. The little vessel shook, and the researcher surprised the piece snapped off like hard candy. It was asphalt, and left behind from the last greasy eruption. When they got to the surface, the researchers examined the piece, and it was lightweight, only a little denser than seawater, and peppered with holes bored by marine animals and the critters crawled out before their eyes. Now, over the next two years, funded by the National Science Foundation, Valentine and his team explored the big mounds in the tiny battered-powered sub, whirling through cold depths beyond the reach of scuba divers. They were dodging junk that litters the seafloor, such as old nets, discarded Christmas trees, the occasional torpedo. They found brittle cascades of hardened asphalt, rippling down the volcano's flanks. Even though it was dormant, two still burped bubbles of methane here and there. Some were steep and craggy, looming in total darkness. Some had shallow craters at the top. All were made of solid asphalt. What we have on our pavement, on our roads. The volcanoes are located in an area of the seafloor where layers of sediment have provided researchers with kind of geophysical archive like bands of the tree trunk. There was also tar deposits filled with rem remnants of ancient sea life. You know where else we have asphalt volcanoes? In the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And those were found uh, a few years before, in about 2004. 
and they thought that was the only place that they they were located but obviously they're finding a lot more i would say i would venture to say it's because they're under sea they can't you know it takes a lot of money to to try and research what's under the under the water um but uh, wherever you have mountains fault lines and sea you definitely have uh crude oil under there and this is the asphalt okay they found asphalt in gulf mexico they have asphalt um, volcanoes here on the west coast so the volcanoes are located in an area of the seafloor where layers of sediment provided researchers kind of geophysical archive like bands of trees tar deposits filled with remnants of ancient marine life the researchers studied the sites uh, had previously found evidence of severe cataclysmic methane gas release about 40,000 years ago and the methane fostered bacteria that leached oxygen out of the water and created a dead zone they wondered what had happened he said now we found a candidate Valentine worked with colleagues from the Woods Hole Group, University of California, Davis, the University of Sydney, Australia, and University of Rhode Island. The volcanoes are located on a fault, he said. Most likely, if an eruption ever happens again, it will occur somewhere else on the fault line, he said, he thinks. Now, like the 15th century explorer, Valentine got to name the volcanoes. The depth surveys of them reminded him of pictures he had once taken in Florence, Italy, the largest, which stands about a mile from the others, is called Il Duomo, after the Florentine Cathedral, and the next largest is Duomo II. It was uh, du Domito, meaning a, a smaller uh, cathedral, a smaller Duomo. And the smaller ones are called Los Domitos. So now about the uh, asphalt domes of California, again by the Woods Hole Oceanic uh, Institution. They paved paradise, turns out actually put up a parking lot. Now the big one, as we said, some 700 feet deep in the waters of uh, California, Santa Barbara. It sits like a group of football sized, uh, football field sized asphalt domes, unlike any other underwater feature known to exist. About 35,000 years ago, a series of these undersea volcanoes erupted, depositing massive flows of petroleum 10 miles offshore. The deposits hardened into domes that were discovered recently, and the report, co-authored with researchers from UC Davis, University of Sydney, University of Rhode Island, in, uh, printed in journal Nature Geoscience, the work funded by National Science Foundation and U.S. Department of Energy and the Seifer Institute. The uh, uh, leader, uh, researcher Christopher Reddy, Director of WHOI's Coastal Ocean Institute said it was an amazing experience driving along and all of a sudden this mountain is staring you in the face. Uh, and he described the discovery of the domes using the deep submersible vehicle Alvin. And over also the dome was teeming with undersea life. It was essentially an oasis, almost like an artificial reef. What really piqued the interest of Reddy the marine geochemist who supply, who studied the oil spills was the chemical composition of the dome. He said, very unusual asphalt material. There aren't that many opportunities to study oil that's been sitting around on the bottom of the ocean for 35,000 years. Reddy had a unique chance and came the courtesy of UCSB earth scientist, lead author David Let Valentine. He was the one who first came upon these large structures, naming them the Duomo, Domito, okay, uh, back in 2007 from his initial dive with the Alvin. Valentine and Reddy were on a cruise aboard WHOI operated research vessel Atlantis, following up on undersea mapping survey of the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, MBARI, and the work of UCSB earth scientist Ed Keller. Valentine said the largest dome is about the size of two football fields side by side and is as tall as a six-story building. Alvin's robotic arm snap, snap, snap off a piece of the formation that we said cracked off like, um, uh, you know, like uh, caramel candy in a basket, put it up and delivered it to Reddy aboard the Atlantis for inspection. Reddy says, I was sleeping, somebody woke me up and wanted me to look at the rocks and test them. 
And he said, I was amazed at how easy it was to break, which confirmed it was solid rock. It was not solid rock. Without access to sophisticated equipment in his Woods Hole laboratory, Reddy employed a 25 cent glass tube, the back of a big pen, a little nail polish remover, analyzing the crusty substance. And he used the crude tools like a mortar and pestle to grind the rock. He said, literally within seven minutes, it became like thick oil. Okay. So it was uh, obviously. Um, Amazing. After making some scheduled changes, Valentine cleared the way for him and ready to take Alvin back to several sites in 2007. They were joined by others, Woodhull um, Oceanic Institute collaborators, Dana Yoger, Richard Camilli, Robert Nelson, okay, and also the, from the University of Sydney. And they said, with that combination, we were able to go in and do very detailed mapping of the site and very detailed sampling at the seafloor and using mass spectrometers and radiocarbon dating in their respective laboratory scientists were able to confirm the nature and the age of these domes. Reddy said to me, as an oil spill chemist, this was very exciting. I got to find out what oil looks like after, after 35,000 years. What it looked like was incredibly weathered. That means nature had taken a lot of uh, away a lot of compounds. These mounds of black material were the latest remnants of oil that exploded up from below. To see nature doing this on its own was an unbelievable finding. A few asphalt-like undersea structures have been reported, but not anything exactly like these. No large structures like what we see here. So I, uh, what he's trying to say is that these may be a little bit bigger than what they found in the Gulf of Mexico. He estimates that the dome structures contain about 100,000 tons of residual asphalt and compares them to an underwater version of La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, complete with fossils of ancient animals. I, I, I'm, I want to ask myself, uh, how was the sea level at that time? I wonder if these volcanoes were above land, above sea, or uh, below sea when they, when they were you know, 40, uh, 30, 40,000 years ago. Because it was the it was a nice age from what they told us. I don't know how far down they are. Now the researchers were not exactly sure why sea life has taken up residence around the asphalt domes, but one possibility is that because the oil has become benign, uh, they are able to actually feed off it and get energy from it. So they may also be thriving onto the tiny holes in the dome areas that release a minim, a minute amounts of methane gas. Scientists plan to continue their study, of course, on these asphalt domes. They said, we have some very fundamental questions that remain. It would be nice to know what's going on deep down under these things, of course, because they're volcanoes. Now, one future direction is to try and actually drill into them. We also need to turn it over to some geo geologists to find out where this oil is really coming from. More fundamentally, we're going to look at the actual degradation of the oil by microorganisms. Now, from a chemical point of view, Reddy says he'll continue to probe the question of exactly which of the chemicals that make up the dome stayed around all these years. So they have to find out, uh, the geologists really have to find out where this oil is coming from. Uh, th this is another, okay, it's fascinating that they found these things, but, you know, that means that there's more, more volcanoes around California. I'll leave links below for you for this. It's on fizz.org. Please consider supporting me on my Patreon account because YouTube has demonetized me and I really appreciate you to keep continuing viewing my videos because I will apply for remonetization in a month, January 8th. Thank you for your support. I wish you a wonderful Christmas season. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Petraean channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.